you know, as a cop, I like to see suspects being punished. I like, to, because that's what the courts do, I like to get them to come and get them punished through the judicial system. But I kind of also realise that the victims don't always get that. The victims sometimes need to know why, why somebody's done something, why they've done this, why they've done that. And if I can make, um, if I can get rather the, the suspects to tell the victims why, I think it gives the victim some, some more power. I think the power balance changes and I think that makes the victim feel better. Restorative justice can be done in a variety of different ways. It can be done directly or indirectly and that depends on what the harmed party and the harmer want or what's best for them. Uh, some people prefer a more direct approach where there's both parties in the same room having a conversation. Other people prefer something a little bit more indirect, perhaps by a letter, perhaps by an audio or a video recording, perhaps by third party mediation. Everything depends on what the harmed and the harmer want. The process was it was really interesting. We obviously, myself and the lead practitioner, we had several meetings with the victim and offender and um, eventually we brought them both together and um, it went really well. Um, people that are in my position, I would say if you feel that you've got unanswered questions and that you feel like there's a lot of sort of um, emotion and, and misunderstanding around what's happened, why it's happened, why you're feeling the way that you're feeling and that you feel like you need to sort of share that with the person that's done it, I would say do it, don't hesitate. From a professional perspective, as in a police officer where I'm doing it, um, what I would tell them is that it doesn't affect um, any of their um, existing workload. They don't have to do anything extra other than a 10 second task or niche. It isn't a big deal. What it does do is it just, um, it's something that passes on to yourself in your department. You then take it on and deal with it. It doesn't affect how the suspect is dealt with in custody. It doesn't affect the sentence of court. There's no mitigation there at all. It's purely about looking after the victim. Pure and simple. And so don't think it's an easy option for the suspects. That's what I really want to get across. Mm. It's not easy, easy for them to do. So something that's, ooh, we can make it. They've done really well. I bought into this. No. It's all about looking after the victim and giving the victim that power that I think they really need without causing the cops more work. I did some digging just around our police internet. Um, I've, I've used it previously, but not recently. Um, so um, I found the referral form. And it was just very easy. The referral form was easy. And and it's another bonus for me the police officers so everything was taken out of my hands to sort out, you know, there's no there's nothing for me to chase up at that point. I was kept well informed of what happened and I was very pleased with it. My son decided to have a drink, have too many and start an argument. Um, which then escalated and ended up having to ring the police to have him removed from my home. We can look at any offences. There's nothing in particular that is out of bounds. Everything is on a case by case basis. I thought it's. I, I do believe it's a good idea because I think the the talking and the getting the getting a lot of things off your chest is is good. Um, and things have improved with Nikki since being involved. For Nikki to understand that he cannot destroy other people's property, he has to respect my home because that's where I live mm -hmm. um, and I think he, he finally has realised that he can't carry on and act like he does when he's had a drink. I rarely think about him now. Before I thought about him a lot because I, it was, I had somebody to blame which I still have but I kind of understand what happened on the day now and the fact that he didn't set out to kill somebody, do you know what I mean, and what he's sort of been through as well. Do you know what I mean? Uh, I don't feel sorry for him, but I just yeah. have an understanding mm. now. Every time I, I get to a, a dispersal uh, stage, I'm considering restorative justice because it just seems what the almost perfect option from, from everyone's perspective. Not every victim of crime is going to want this, but every victim of crime should be at least offered it. So you can find out more about restorative justice by visiting our website, which is rjwestyorkshire.org.uk. We've also got a free phone telephone number, which is 0800 783 1550. Um, we will take referrals from victims, offenders themselves, or through third party organisations. Um, we have a Twitter account and a Facebook account. There's also information on the police internet and intranet. 
um, as well as on the Police and Crime Commissioner's website as well. So there's a variety of different ways that people can get in contact. We've also got an email address, which is rjwestyorkshire at resortysolutions.org.uk.